Don't tell your mother Kiss one another Die for each other We're cool for the summer I was recently asked by a fan of mine on my Facebook page what my opinions were on one of three things. I will not beat around the bush and I'm just going to get straight to the point for both time and well, sanity reasons as well as the fact that I didn't want to end up writing a whole dissertation on the subject. I was asked what my views were on statism and their practices within a Marxist state and movement. If we could see attacks on NATO bases or militant retaliation against the banks and the rich, and what my opinion was on the use of violence for political struggle. So, with that, let me get straight to the point. First off, let me state that I am not a pacifist in any way, but I do believe in conflict resolution. But if necessity comes to it, I will defend myself. That being said, I apply this to my philosophical and political beliefs. And let me start by explaining this by answering the last question first. I was asked, what is your stand in general about using fists, guns, and bombs in political struggle? Well, I am a Marxist, so I believe in the Marxist idea that the people ought to be armed, able-bodied, and sound-minded and for, for any political struggle. The bourgeoisie and the oppressor class are always out to try and oppress us, the common citizen, i.e. the proletariat. Therefore, I believe that the people should be prepared at all times, like the Minutemen who fought for America's independence for an armed struggle and conflict against the ruling class at the time, which was the British Empire, and that we could, uh, should continue to be prepared and fight by any means necessary to accomplish the end goal of achieving freedom and liberation from the ruling class. I also believe the proletariat ought to follow a Maoist theory on perpetual people's revolution on an, and invest in education, science and technology, uh, national defense, while also focusing a great deal on domestic and economic policy to help develop our ideal society, whatever that may be. Politicians should only be allowed to sit in for a certain amount of years in a state of or national diet and legislature. As revolutionaries get older, like milk and bread, they become spoiled and stale. They get reactionary and counter-revolutionary. That is why, whether in a Marxist state or a bourgeois state, the older the politician, the lesser the good judgment is and the more prominence there is for bad policy or even policy that seeks to infringe on liberty. That is why it is important to educate the masses of the new and upcoming generations because they are the future and they are truly the ones that should continue the fight for progress and democracy. The second question that I was asked, which basically is the first question, was what do you think about red terror both in statist, communist, or social states and or part of revolutions, uprisings, and finally left-wing terrorist organizations like Bader Meinhof, Red Brigades, Tupac Amaru, or A Shining Path, the Revolutionary Struggle, on the 17th of November in Greece, uh, who killed people, and you know, blah, blah, blah. So basically the point was what, what were my views on statism? Uh, my opinions on certain groups is relatively limited, so let me answer all of that in what I do know and believe. First off, let me start with the idea of statism. Yes, it is true that, state, that some statism has the power to corrupt any system, whether it be socialist or capitalist. Marxism is the science and philosophy of the socialist model, and if followed correctly and implemented well, can successfully lead to communism. It is also a policy of trial and error, and is left up to the interpretation of those that are there to carry it out. Sadly, there are some that do not care, that have not carried it out very well, um, while others have succeeded in carrying it out in some form of success or another. But, of course, we've never gotten to a successful communist state because of sabotage from the bourgeoisie. That being all said, uh, if, they do, um, if they do not know what they're doing while trying to carry out their policies, it can have disastrous effects. For example, Mao's Cultural Revolution, while it may have helped for art, you know, promoting the arts, um, helping to in rapidly industrialize the country, there were certain agricultural policies that basically failed, and his plans to rapidly industri industrialize China like Stalin did probably was not the best idea, at least was probably could have been implemented better. 
One, because Stalin was, a, in my opinion, was a statist authoritarian who, while a great military strategist and leader, was a horrible policy and, and political leader. But I'll leave that up to my own fellow Marxists to decide that. Uh, number two, Mao's plan to rapidly uh, to rapid production would have been best applied for the local councils and gradually work its way up to the national level and frankly could have been applied better as his theories did need more of a tweaking. All that being said, statism does have the power to corrupt, and no state should allow statism, much like nationalism, to corrupt the main objective, building a progressive and democratic society. Statism has the power to lead to expansionism, which easily leads to militarism and imperialism, which leads to nationalism. Statism in itself is reactionary and is counterproductive to the cause of revolution in a developing socialist country. It has the power to deviate us from the goal of communism and towards a path of revisionism and authoritarianism, much like that under Deng Xiaoping, which led to where China is now, a pseudo-socialist state that is really based on crony capitalism and a totalitarian one-party dictatorship. The same can also happen to capitalism, as the capitalist state is designed to monopolize and control the means of production. This easily leads to the creation of what we, could, what we would call corporatism. Thus, without regulation or means to control it, it can spiral out of control and lead to the, to the need to expand its profit. Therefore, that means expanding into other markets, which means expanding your, your nation. This quickly escalates to militarism, imperialism, and nationalism itself. And this rapid expansionism caused problems, uh, can cause problems for the capitalist state, which then tries to save itself by either printing money or continued expansion and monopolization. This soon can lead to economic turmoil or can lead to a need for the state to monopolize its political power. This leads to fascism and totalitarianism as well, just in a different form. It, if used as part of the goal of if used as part of the goal objectives or beliefs in an ideology by a particular revolutionary group uh, or uprising, then the revolution and movement is already lost and corroded by statist corruption. It cannot be successful and can only lead to problems, even if that they were to gain some sort of political power. This leads me to say that the only thing I can uh, the only thing I can when it comes to the knowledge that I have on these organizations that were described. They all basically fell victim to the power of, well, they all fell victim to greed and power. At some point, they had, have, may have sought revolution, but the, let the idea of achieving and gaining state power consume them to the point that they lost focus of the real objective of armed which was armed struggle and the science and philosophy that is Marxism. In essence, they essentially deviated away from Marxist-Leninist policy and became statist. Tupac Amaru was a struggle of anti-imperialism but was based in, in bourgeois statism. Uh, the Shining Path became corrupted by the drug cartels and the uh, November 17th revolution started as an anti-imperialist and anti-militarist movement against the Greek military regime, but it soon became consumed by the idea of state power. Now, while they did help to gradually and, rap and even rapidly, in some cases, change the political landscape of Greece, and to, which led to the bourgeois democracy that it is crumbling now, it is hard to say what would have happened had they been successful at gaining power. My personal belief is that they had good intentions, but I think that they lost focus, and that at, some, and at that point in time they were already corrupted and had lost sight of their real intentions and goal and what their goals were. Now, the last question I did get asked uh, that I'm going to speak on is: Do you think it is it it is in the, this crisis and turmoil of modern world? of the modern world possible that we see attacks on NATO headquarters or banks or rich people by left-wing rebels. I think it's entirely possible to see strikes against certain states in the forms of dis civil disobedience, civil unrest, forms of you know bourgeois liberalism and possibly even reactionary 
actions and tactics, re reactionary elements possibly. However, I don't really think that we're going to see like the power of attacks on NATO bases like headquarters and things like that. I really don't see that as ha happening. I don't really see it as a realistic idea happening in the Western world, at least not in the the, the really near any time in the near future. Um, bank robberies can are more likely and in any form of you know and I think any form of sab sabotage to cripple and bring down the ruling class bourgeois state is possible. And frankly, any form of sabotage against the bourgeois state, I'm for. Not that I'm saying that people should go out and just rot, you know, wantonly, you know, create vandalism and rob banks. But I do think that in some form or another, that sabotage against the ruling class is necessary for trying to cripple cripple the cat you know the capitalist system um though i d doubt highly though any of these like in the western world any of these things would be highly successful given the fact that for instance you go rob a bank or try to take a gun and go fight the government on your own you're not going to get very far with that so realistically no i don't really think that that any sort of real activity is going to happen, at least not within these few years that are coming up, maybe several, several, several years down the line, maybe, and, you know, socialism kind of gradually begins to kind of impact the Western world a little bit more, but as of right now, I just don't really see it happening. Um, while Europe is more radically ready to fight for their freedom, most of the Western powers will often pretty much get, they, 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 will off, they will often offer concessions which will be largely accepted by the people. Uh, many in the first world are simply just not prepared, they're ill-equipped, and, and or just plain unwilling to do revolution, and therefore will settle with reformism. Um, the ruling class will be willing to concede said reforms to keep the masses happy, and hold on to their power. I do see, however, that if radical rightism, such as Golden Dawn, continues in Greece and Front National in France, we may see uprisings, violence, kidnappings, and even civil conflicts engulf those particular states. I do see the EU on its way out at some point. Europe will most likely end up trying to save itself much in the fashion that Greece is at, you know, the point it's at now, at some point in Europe's future, and even the United States, as invincible as they may seem, uh, will not be immune to their frag to the fragmentation of its own economic, political, and social order. But this will most likely take several, several, several years to happen, and the ruling class is also always known to pull a rabbit out of their hat and a stick out of their ass, and finding some way to avoid a catastrophic collapse and save their asses for you know, a little bit longer and kind of just, you know, keeping their, keeping their struggle, their, their, their bourgeois struggle alive and trying to contain and control their power. It also typically means that they will also resort to more draconian means sometimes to control that power. But whatever. Overall, my opinion, um, I think that it is necessary and possible to achieve goal objectives of revolution against a totalitarian, a totalitarian or fledgling state. I also believe it is important not to lose focus of what those goal objectives are for fear of being consumed by reactionism in some way, whether that be in the form of statism or fascism. I believe that when these forces have consumed a movement, it is already doomed and the cause is lost. If this happens in government, it is the responsibility of the people to fight against it and reinstate order, democracy, and, and, and freedom through the ideal of people's liberation. I believe this will come to every state in one form or another, and those states and their people will have to come to the realization of whose side they are on and whether they will fight or submit. I believe that armed struggle is the basis and necessity for any movement willing to stand up for the freedom and democracy of themselves people and their nation, 
and that it is important to keep an ever-present new generation progressing and developing a nation forward rather than leaving it stagnating and held back by an old policy by old policies dictated by an old guard group of reactionaries. So I'm hoping that answered a few questions. Um, hope it kind of you know for anybody that might have had some questions similar to that I hope um, I hope this person's questions as well as my answers help to kind of explain that a little bit it helped to possibly even open up your eyes to some of the views that I do have and um, yeah I I, and I just hope it kind of helped uh, and I hope I explained it I tried my very best. I, I was originally going to post this as a comment to um, this fan of mine, and um, he's been a loyal follower of the page. He's been a been watching some of my videos fairly religiously, and I want to thank you, man, for um, for continuing to tune in and be a. a regular to all this and uh, I'm not going to give out his name for you know personal reasons because I haven't asked him whether I could or not and uh, j just I also like being due to privacy and an uh, anonymity so um, but yeah I want to really thank um, I'll, I, for, for reasons obvious I'll just call him G um and uh, I want to thank G for his questions, and really, I hope I answered it as well as I could. I tried, again, trying to make this a comment, and it just ended up turn, turning into an essay. So, um, that's kind of how it works for me. And I just figured, this will make a good blog. So I figured, hell, I might as well write it, might as well film it, might as well put it out there. Yeah. So, I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been NorCal Corner. Peace, guys.